Hey guys, Jared here with the Shooting Institute. Today we're going to be covering the seven fundamentals of marksmanship. Now the seven fundamentals of marksmanship apply to every weapon system you'll shoot across the board. It doesn't matter if you're shooting close range with pistol, long range with rifle, if you're shooting shotgun, the seven fundamentals apply. The specific application of shooting, well that's on you. You have to apply the fundamentals that you take, the fundamentals of shooting, to your specific application. We're not teaching specific application. You can't teach specific application because if I take everything that I do in a match shoot and I try to put it over into uh, a CQB or a military or law enforcement style shooting, it doesn't always work. But what does always work are the fundamentals. So that's why we cover the fundamentals of marksmanship and that's why we have to learn the fundamentals of marksmanship. We have to be able to utilize these fundamentals to apply across the board to whatever type of shooting we find ourselves involved in. All right, so the first fundamental is sights, and sights breaks down into two things, sight picture, sight alignment. The second fundamental is trigger. We've got to press the trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun. The third is grip. The fourth is stance. The fifth is breathing. The sixth is follow through, okay? Sights breaks down into two, sight picture, sight alignment, and that's what gives us our seven fundamentals of marksmanship. Sight picture, sight alignment, trigger, grip, stance, breathing, and follow through, and that's what we're gonna cover. Those are the seven fundamentals of marksmanship, and as you watch these videos or you watch the rest of this video, you're gonna be able to see how they apply to your style of shooting. Hey guys, now what we're gonna cover is the sights portion of the fundamentals of marksmanship. I'm gonna pull out my pistol, I'm gonna line it up, on target number five, which is the first portion of sights, that sight picture. I've got to make sure that I'm lined up on target number five. The second portion of sights is sight alignment. I'm going to have equal height, equal light. This is going to help my elevation and windage, which means that my front side and my rear sights are lined up on the up and down, and there's equal light on either side of the front sight as it's lined up with the rear sight. So front sight focus at the end of that is going to give me precision. On my sights, I want sight picture, and I want equal height, equal light with the front and the rear sight, then obtaining front, front sight focus to help with precision. Go ahead and pull the pistol out, line it up. Equal height, equal light. Once I get proper sight picture, front sight focus. Front sight focus. Front sight focus. And as we see, all of those bullets virtually go in the same hole right there on that number five, which lets me know that I had the proper sight picture. I was on the correct target. I lined up my sights appropriately, equal height, equal light, and I maintained front sight focus. That's how we line up our sights. That's the most important thing. That's the number one thing in the fundamentals of shooting. That's the most important thing we need to do. All right, guys, so the next portion of sights that we're going to run involves a red dot. There's a lot of folks that are shooting red dots, so we're going to cover this real quick. What this allows is this allows you to maintain target focus while forcing front sight focus. That's what the laser actually does. The most important thing is that this laser is zeroed. If I can't find my red dot in here, if I can't find the little laser imposed on the screen, I want to line up my irons and my laser should be somewhere in there. If I don't see it, that means my sight is probably dead or broken or the emitter is covered up. A lot of times you see a star cluster from water. That's because the emitter uh, has uh, water or a, a drop of dew or something on it and it'll kind of star cluster. So that's some of the issues we see with these sites. But as long as I line up these sites right here and this thing has a battery in it and it's working, I should see that laser on the target. Now, it creates front sight focus without us actually having to force front sight focus. And when it's zeroed, I don't have to worry about lining up my sights. So the equal height, equal light thing goes away because I've got a laser that I'm using as my point of aim. The one thing that we see with this laser is when I put this on the center of that five, sight picture is still vitally important, it's actually going to hit a little bit lower because of the height of the sight, just like we would see with the carbine. So let's check it out. So I'm sitting here, I don't have to line up my sights. I don't have to worry about equal height, equal light. Front sight focus naturally happens because I see my laser and I'm just gonna press my trigger straight back. And we see it's at the bottom of the target. I'm gonna do it again. We see it going through the same hole. We see it going through the same hole at the six o'clock position of that five uh, target. And that is really because of the ballistic holdover of this site. This site is just a little bit higher 
And if I want to hit center of my target, I actually need to hold at the 12 o'clock position of my target. That's going to be based on your zero. That's going to be based on the height over the board that this side is. And that is sights, sight picture, sight alignment. This already makes you front sight focus, uh, but that sights as it relates to a red dot. Now the next important thing in shooting, or number three in our fundamentals of marksmanship, is trigger squeeze. We've got to be able to press this trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun as it relates to a pistol. Now this pistol right here is a two and a half pound pistol, and I've got about a five and a half pound trigger. I've got to be able to squeeze that trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun, or I will not be able to appropriately keep my rounds on target. So I'm gonna shoot the target right here and I will hold the pistol with a jacked up grip so that you can actually see what my trigger finger is doing. So I'm holding this pistol with a jacked up grip so you can see my trigger finger working right here. I've got proper sight picture, target number five. I have proper sight alignment. Front sight and rear sights are lined up, equal height, equal light. Front sight focus through the slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound, seven pound, eight pound, nine pound, 10 pound, 11 pound. All right, so I fire my shot, I look at my target. There's no new bullet holes in it. It went right through the same hole. Line up my sights again, proper sight pictures, proper sight alignment, front sight focus. What did I do differently with the trigger that time? I went from no and went to go. And if we take a look at the target really quick, we see that if my sights are lined up here, my shot is actually left of the target that I intended to shoot, right? Now these are my red dot shots earlier. This is my uh, iron sight shots. And right here, I see that it's left. Right-handed shooters will push shots to the left, in particular low left. Left-handed shooters will push shots to the right, in particular low right. And that all has to do with this guy right here. So let's take a look at the trigger finger again. Back here, back at 10 feet. Line up my sights appropriately, proper sight picture, proper sight alignment, front sight focus through the slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound, six pound. Back in the same hole. Now, watch what I do with my trigger finger this time. Ride it to the click, a little bit of slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound, seven pound, eight pound. Ride it to the click, got a lot of slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound, seven pound, eight pound. Ride it to a click, just a tad of slack, one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound. And I want you to look at naturally what is happening to my target. What am I doing different with my trigger finger? I'm staying on the face of the trigger, riding it to the click, I'm not utilizing the slack, and I see my group go from here to here. As a right-handed shooter, I'm still dropping them to the left, in particular low left, from one to about, I don't know, seven o'clock. Left-handed shooters will see 11 to about four o'clock. Who sees this happening over time as they shoot? Whether they shoot and increase in their speed, decrease the target size, increase the distance, you see your round start dropping left or low left. It has to do with this trigger finger. I'm going from no to go, or I'm leaving that finger on the face of the trigger, and I'm not allowing my hand to reset and get the same trigger squeeze every single time. When I shoot this pistol, this is what I want to have as far as proper trigger squeeze. Jacked up grip so you can see my hand. Front sight focus through the slack. One pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound. All the way off through the slack. One pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound, seven pound. All the way off through the slack. One pound, two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, six pound. And if we look at my target up here, we see that I have no new holes. I'm back in the same hole. The reason pressing the trigger like that works is because it allows me the ability to manipulate my trigger finger effectively so I can press this trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun. I want you to think about it if you're shooting a rifle. If I'm on a rifle, am I locked down on this rifle tight? No, I'm not gripping as tight as I can. I want this hand to be able to work or this finger to be able to work unimpeded. So take a magazine out right now, grip it as tight as you can, and I want you to work this trigger finger as fast as you can. Tight as you can, fast as you can. Tight as you can, fast as you can. Now I want you to hold this magazine loose. Dead fish handshake loose. Work that trigger finger as fast as you can. Which way is it easier to manipulate this trigger finger? Tight or loose? If you notice that it's easier to manipulate this trigger finger with this hand loose, then you're correct. 
the second or the third fundamental marksmanship, the next most important thing in shooting is trigger manipulation. I've got to press this trigger straight back in increments less than the weight of the gun. And the tighter this hand is, the harder it is to manipulate my trigger finger. When I press my trigger, when I press my trigger and I stay on the face of it, watch what happens to my knuckles. You see how tight this hand is getting? It's because I'm never throwing my grip away versus how loose I can keep it when I throw my grip away. I let my finger off the face of the trigger, number one, to throw my grip away so that these three little amigo, amigos don't impede my ability to manipulate the trigger. Number two, I let my finger off the face of the trigger because I get the same trigger squeeze every time. My finger doesn't have to relearn anything. I've got the slack. It's about a pound, pound and a half of slack. And then I know I've got four pounds to go. I'm able to press the same trigger press every single time, which is what's going to allow me to get used to that trigger press, whether it's from the holster, whether it's from the reload, whether it's from a presentation, or whether it's my sixth or seventh shot into that volley. And that is proper trigger squeeze. Now for fundamental number four, it's grip. When we shoot this pistol, recoil is gonna throw our sights everywhere. But how can we properly manage recoil so that we can put those multiple shots on target as quick as possible, or so that we can see that we're missing or see that we're hitting so we can either not miss again or continue to hit. That's what we're wanting to do. And that's where we work grip. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off on target number six. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this pistol with one hand and we're gonna watch which way it recoils. Okay, so I line it up out there. I go ahead and make sure I get my focus. I'm pressing my trigger like I did earlier, and all I'm gonna do is I fire that shot. The pistol recoils up and to the left. It recoils to the side where there's something open. Now I'm gonna hold it with my left hand, and I'm gonna do the same thing, okay? Line up my sights, press my trigger straight back. It goes up and to the right. If I hold my pistol without gripping it with this hand, I just lay it in place right here, Front sight focus through the slack, and all it's gonna do is it's gonna recoil straight back. So what does that little drill show us? It shows us that recoil bleeds the gaps. So the first thing in grip that I wanna do is cover up the gaps. The first gap I have is the back strap of the pistol. I wanna get as high on the back strap of the pistol as possible without getting too high, which will create a malfunction. Uh, gap number one. Gap number two, I have an open space right here. I want to lay this hand in that open space and I can wrap these fingers around because I'm wanting to get a little bit of grip from this hand. When I'm holding this pistol, this is probably 20% of my grip or a soft handshake. This is probably 60% of my grip or a firm handshake. And we'll talk about that last 20% here in a little bit. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap, put my hand in place, wrap my fingers around, and that's where I'm going to pull tension right there. That's gap number two. Gap one, the back strap. Gap two, the gap on the grip of the pistol. Gap three, these thumbs, I'm just gonna lay them down the slide. This is gonna help with my natural point of aim just pointing toward the target, but I'm just gonna lay them in place right there. And gap number four, oftentimes we see guys squeeze their trigger with their finger like this. Is there a gap there? Yep. I wanna go ahead and close that gap up. I wanna close that gap up while still maintaining that and I've covered up all the gaps. Gap one, back strap. Gap two, side of grip. Gap three, the frame of the gun, whichever hand you shoot with, and gap four, that trigger finger. And now I've covered up the gaps on my pistol. And this will allow me to fire, I'm gonna go ahead and fire three shots and I'm not doing anything but cover the gaps. And then I wanna look for more targets, is there no one else? But as we notice, I'm not shooting fast, but that the sights rise, they fall right back down in place on that target. And I'm able to keep my sights basically right here on the number six. And if I'm doing everything properly, we see that I put all those rounds in the same hole again. If I want to speed up my shooting, I can still do it with just grip. But where do I get that last 20%? I said I got about 20% on this hand, about 60% on this hand. But that's only 80%. I've got 20 more left. Where am I getting that from? 
What I want you to do if you're at home, I want you to take your hands and I want you to put them together right here out in front of you and get somebody to try to pull your hands apart. Use your back muscles to keep them together like you're shooting and get somebody to pull your hands apart. Now what I want you to do is I want you to keep your hands pressed together and I don't want you to use your back, but I want you to use your chest. I want you to create cohesion of grip right here, utilizing your chest and your core. Maintain a cohesion of grip with your hands right there with your chest and your core. You've probably noticed that you're a little bit stronger utilizing chest and core. And that's how you can get the last 20% to maintain that recoil. 20% in this hand, 60% in this hand, 10-10 from either side of the chest. I'm using my major muscle groups, the first major muscle groups that recoil hits to maintain cohesion of grip while I'm shooting my pistol. Now what I want you to do is put your hands in front of you like you're praying, leave your thumbs up like it's a sight, and I want you to push those hands out in front of you till you find that comfortable position where you can maintain cohesion of grip and you have dexterity of fingers. That's going to be about where you need to shoot in order to use your core and your pecs to manage recoil or maintain recoil. So I've covered up the gaps and now what I want to do is get that last little bit 10-10 from the chest, maintaining cohesion of grip where that pistol is going to recoil back on. And what this will start to do is this will start keeping you from having to do this every time you shoot, reset my hands, and you'll start resetting your chest. When I think about it, because I'm not always good at numbers, I said 20, 60, 10, 10, instead of thinking of it that way, a little, a lot, the rest from the chest. And that's how I'm shooting, that's how I properly manage recoil. And when I do it that way, I've covered up the gaps. I got front sight focus, a little, a lot, the rest from the chest, front sight focus. Flat. Is there no one else? I can bring it back, shake it off like Taylor Swift, put it back out there. Front sight focus through the slide. Is there no one else? At this point in time, I can look at my target and say, hmm, on that last run, I felt like my second shot was low and I see a low bullet hole and I can track with that second shot. How do I know it was low? Well, I broke my shot when my sights were at the bottom of the page or at the bottom of the target. And that lets me know why I have a miss. Because the end goal in managing recoil is to watch my sights and know why did I miss so I don't miss anymore or why am I hitting so I can continue to hit. Is there no one else? And that's proper grip. All right, guys, now we're going to cover the stance portion of the fundamentals of marksmanship. This is fundamental number five. Now, this is really simple and straightforward, and oftentimes when people think of stance, they think of standing, kneeling, and prone. And there's nothing wrong with that. But especially as it relates to the pistol, I want you to think of I'm drawn from the holster or I'm presenting from a, from a position where I've not actually got my sights on target, and I want to be squared up to the target. Now, if I'm wearing body armor, I want to keep my plates toward the threat. But the most important thing here is making sure my natural point of aim is correct. That's going to help me as I fire those multiple shots uh, on target. Now, we have these thumbs that are laying down the frame of the pistol, and all I want you to think about is I want you to think about pointing my thumbs. You've been pointing for a long time. I've got little kids at home, and even when they're like 18 months old, they can't talk very well, but what can they do? They can point at what they want and say this, this, cookie, mommy, daddy. And I want you to think that as you're looking at your target. I want you to think of pointing at what you want to hit, and that's my thumbs. And if I point at what I want to hit, and I feel myself as kind of off candid or off kilter, I know my natural point to aim is not correct. So if I'm at this still target right here and I draw and I point and I see my sights are to the right side of that target, I know that my natural point of aim is off to the right. So as I fire multiple shots, as I get under duress or stress, what's going to start happening? I'm going to start cheating to the right of that target unless I square up to it. So if I draw and my natural point of aim is off, whether I'm standing, kneeling, or prone, I need to make sure that I adjust my body to get my natural point of aim correct. So when I actually present to the target, there I am on the target. What I don't want to do is to have my natural point of aim off and fight back over by turning my arms to get me on target because I'm naturally still going to fall this way, especially as recoil starts happening. 
And that's how we properly get a good natural point of aim, and that's what's vitally important for stance. It allows me to be able to fire those shots quicker. I'm not fighting over anything because as soon as I draw, if I'm lined up on the target, I can break that shot. That's the stance portion of the fundamentals of marksmanship. All right, guys, so now we're covering the six fundamental marksmanship. We're getting down to the end. There's only seven fundamentals. This is number six, and it's breathing. Now, breathing as it relates to shooting oftentimes is I take a breath in, I take a breath out, and I'm going to break my shot on the exhale. I don't want to break my shot while I'm breathing or while I'm holding my breath. I want to break it on the exhale. And that's fine if I'm shooting rifles or I'm trying to check a group with my rifle or reloading for a rifle or something like that. Uh, but when it comes to pistol, especially as it relates to competition shooting or defensive pistol or whatever application you have, I'm not breathing and shooting in between breaths on my shots. I might fire two or three or four or five shots in a single breath. And y'all have seen us do that uh, in some of these videos, right? I'm just managing recoil, making sure my sights are on target, uh, and, and I'm squeezing that trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun. With that being said, when duress happens, we start to get out of breath. So the most important thing in breathing, especially as it relates to pistol shooting or dynamic pistol shooting or defensive pistol shooting or combat pistol shooting, is that this ain't the first time my heart rate hit, has hit 140 since I wrestled in high school or played college ball. Now this doesn't mean that you have to be some kind of CrossFit god, but what it does mean is you need to be in some form of shape. I don't need to be out of breath when I get out of the truck. I don't need to be out of breath when I draw my pistol because when duress happens or when that situation uh, takes place where you're going to have to utilize this handgun, you don't want to be out of breath because it's going to wind up messing up your ability to perform all the fundamentals appropriately. So if you get a chance, work out. If you can't work out, walk jog. I understand age gets on us. The older I get, the more my knees and my shoulders and all these injuries over time hurt. But you still have to be in some form of shape if you're going to carry a pistol or if you're going to carry any type of firearm or if you're in the firearms industry, if you're a law enforcement officer, if you're looking at home defense, you need to be in some form of shape. This is just a tool for the fight. Your breathing is what helps you in the fight. A fight is still a fight. We just now have another tool for the fight. And in order to use this tool properly, we have to be able to breathe appropriately and keep ourselves cool, calm, and collected so we can perform the fundamentals appropriately. And that starts with sight picture, sight alignment, maintaining front sight focus during sight alignment, pressing that trigger in increments less than the weight of the gun, and making sure that I cover up all the gaps and any recoil management issues I have, I take care of with my major muscle groups, not my minor muscle groups or my hands. And what we can start remembering as we shoot or as we shoot faster is sight slack squeeze. Sight slack squeeze. And if we can breathe appropriately and not be out of, out of sorts or stressed out whenever we start shooting, that's going to help us maintain sight slack squeeze of that trigger as we fire those multiple shots on target. That's the breathing portion of your fundamentals of marksmanship. All right, guys, now we're going to cover the last fundamental marksmanship, which is follow through. And we're going to cover how follow through applies to each one of the fundamentals. Because as we stated in the classroom, follow through is just going over what I just did to see why I hit so I can continue to hit or why I missed so I don't miss anymore. So the follow through point for sights, that sight picture, sight alignment, maintaining front sight focus is as simple as this. I'm going to shoot target number two right now. We've seen the groups we can shoot when we maintain front sight focus, but all I'm gonna do is stare at target number two. I can look for more targets as there's no one else. I bring it back, and what I saw the entire time I shot for all three of those shots on target number two was I saw bullet holes appearing on target. If I see bullet holes appearing on target, what do I know that I'm not doing in my fundamentals of marksmanship on the sights level? I've got appropriate sight picture. I'm shooting target number two. I've got appropriate sight alignment. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know because I'm not looking at my sights. I'm looking at target number two. I'm definitely not getting front sight focus, which is what creates precision. So if I see bullet holes appearing on my target, what do I know I'm not looking at? I'm not looking at my sights. So I know that I'm getting the first portion of the fundamentals incorrect. I'm not looking at my sights, which means I'm not able to get proper sight alignment 
front sight focus. So that's the first thing. And that's the first follow through point on sights. Our next follow through point is gonna be trigger. If I turn around and I fire this pistol and I notice that this hand right here is flopping everywhere in the wind, I might have sights perfectly and I might hit the target, but what is happening to this hand right here? I'm starting to make up for a lack of grip with this hand, with this hand, which impedes what? It impedes my ability to manipulate my trigger appropriately. So if I notice my trigger hand getting tight on the gun, what is that a follow through point for? That's a follow through point for me not being able to appropriately manipulate my trigger finger. Remember the drill we did where we squeezed the magazine back during trigger squeeze? The tighter this is, the harder it is to manipulate this trigger finger. We want to keep this hand loose. If this hand is loose, guess what? This hand will be making up for it. So I want to maintain a loose grip with this hand so I can manipulate my trigger finger properly. Follow through point for trigger. If this hand is getting tight, I know I'm probably hindering my ability to effectively manipulate my trigger finger in increments less than the weight of the gun. Now for my next follow through point. So we've got a follow through point for sights. We've got a follow through point for trigger. Now we've got a follow through point for grip. It goes back to what we just did. If I notice that this hand is really, really tight on the gun and this hand is doing nothing, what do I know I'm not maintaining? I'm not maintaining cohesion to grip. So as I grip, I need to remember a little with my trigger hand, a lot with my off hand, the rest from the chest. When I shoot like that, I again notice that my pistol is flopping everywhere. That's proper grip. Now for improper grip. Do we see the difference in how my pistol moves around? I've got to make sure that I maintain appropriate grip with both hands, a little with my trigger hand so I can manipulate this properly, a lot with this hand because I'm making up for my lack of grip here and the rest from the chest. That's the follow through point for grip. Now for our stance or our body position. Okay, I'm standing up. We talked a little bit about it earlier, but if I go to present to the target and I'm over here to the right, what do I know I need to do? I need to square up on my target. So as I present my weapon system, if I'm presenting off to the left or the right or up or down of the target, I know that my body position is not lined up appropriately and I need to realign my body, not just align my shoulders and my arms. So if I want to hit target number two, I'm on the target, no problem with my presentation. I can look to see if there's anyone else out there and then I can put my pistol away. That's my follow through point for proper stance. For breathing, if I've been running back and forth on the range and I know I'm out of breath, that's going to hinder my ability to properly perform these fundamentals. There's nothing wrong with adding that stress in your training. Just realize that it's going to degrade my ability to perform these fundamentals properly over time. And I might not be as precise or accurate simply because of my physical ability. And those are the fundamentals of marksmanship, and those are the and that's follow-through points and how we properly apply them to the fundamentals of marksmanship.